This is the voice of TK Coleman, and you're listening to an episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about teaching and being taught. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. Don't make the mistake of requiring all your teachers to be older than you. It's a mistake because when you do this, you lose. I heard someone put it this way. They made a distinction between vertical networks and horizontal networks. A horizontal network is one where everyone is kind of around your same age and they belong to a similar demographic as you. You have a network of people that if you are in your 20s, they're all in their 20s. You're a young professional, they're all young professionals. If you're a Catholic, they're all Catholic, whatever it may be. Horizontal networks, they have their value. They have their place in life. For many of us, because we have come through a traditional schooling system where everything is based on age segregation, grouping people together based on their age, we tend to think about networks in terms of horizontal horizontal networks. So, you know, when people talk about college, they talk about like, it's the networking haven of the world. Like the networking is so amazing. The networking is so amazing. And they're referring to the horizontal network. You're interacting with people that are for the most part around the same age as you. But there's a separate kind of network that doesn't get talked about as much and you don't really experience it so much in school. And it's the kind of network that you need for a professionally successful life, for a personally fulfilling life. And that is a network that involves interaction with a diverse range of people from different ages, meaning that all of your friends are not in the same age as you. And when I say friends, I deliberately use that word because we tend to categorize people who are older than us or younger than us as people that are mentors or mentees, people that are teachers or students. And we tend to be so uncomfortable with the idea of having a friend that's 10 years older than us that we put them in that box or, oh, that person's kind of like my cool uncle. Oh, that person's my mentor. Oh, that person's a father figure. You know, if you're 20, do you know what it's like to have a friend who's 40? Like somebody that you just have good conversations with. You learn things from them, but they also learn things from you. You don't have to just think of them as a mentor, as a father figure, or as an uncle, or as an aunt. They're just a friend, right? And the same thing is with people who are younger than you. If you're 25, you've got someone in your life that's 18. You're 50 years old, you know someone that's 25. People of every age group have something to offer you in terms of the way they experience life. And when you think about networks solely in terms of a horizontal network, you limit the amount of people that you can learn from because you're only being influenced by people who are of the same age group as you. The best way to be a great thinker and to be a great learner is to surround yourself with people who have wisdom, not based on some superficial quality like age. Now, age often gets associated with the wisdom because something that comes with age is experience and something that comes with experience is not wisdom, but the opportunity to acquire wisdom. Experience is not an automatic giver of wisdom. Experience gives you many opportunities for wisdom. And so the more age you have, the more experience you have, the more chances you have to reflect on those experiences and become a person of depth. But there are many people who are older and they simply don't do that. They don't make themselves available to the lessons that life teaches them. And so you'll, you'll find many people who are older and they're absolutely miserable. They have a victim mindset. They are not going to be very useful to you if you want to learn how to be successful, if you want to learn how to have a great marriage, if you want to learn how to network, if you want to learn how to be good in your career, if you want to learn how to be mentally healthy. There are people that are older than you that aren't going to be very useful to you. So don't assume that just because someone is older than you that they are a great teacher. And the same is true with people that are younger than you. There are going to be people that are younger than you who will sometimes make you want to roll your eyes at the level of naivete they have in relation to things that you have experienced. But right alongside that is going to be a quality of wisdom that they have that you don't have because their experiences differ from yours. We can't just think about experience quantitatively in terms of who has more of it. 
But we also have to think about experiences qualitatively in terms of what kinds of experiences do we have. And there are younger people that have traveled places that you have not been. They have suffered in ways that you have not suffered. They have made interesting observations. They have made art. They have built things that are simply different from the observations that you have made, from the relationships you have been in, from the things that you have built. And so in that openness to learning from people of all ages, you, you provide yourself with an opportunity to be a fuller human being. Not diversity for the mere sake of diversity. I'm not talking about a virtue signaling diversity here. I'm talking about a self-interested diversity. I'm talking about being so passionate about your own possibilities that you are willing to learn from anyone and that you will not, you will not exclude yourself from the opportunity to get better merely because the person who can make you better happens to be five years younger or 10 years, 10 years younger. Don't make the mistake of requiring all your teachers to be older. Let's go to the second tweet. The first step to helping our students understand is to cease being irritated with their struggles to understand. The ability to answer a question, the ability to provide a strong argument for people who have objections, the ability to explain things in a way that helps others understand clearly is one of the most valuable skills you can have as a teacher. But there's one more skill that I would put right above that. And that is the ability to listen to someone ask a question, to listen to someone make an objection, to observe someone struggle to get what you're saying and not be annoyed by it, not be flustered by it, not be frustrated by it. To be able to look someone in the eye, to be able to listen to someone's expression of confusion and to say, I totally get that. That makes sense. And then to be able to explain their confusion back to them in a way that is better than the way they explained it. To be able to empathize, not for the sake of trying to convince people that you're some amazing, compassionate person, but to be able to empathize because you are human enough to remember what it was like for you to not know the things that you now understand. The most important quality we can have as educators is that ability to respond to the questions that people have with joy. There's kind of a cultural movement, if you will, that involves people getting really angry and really defensive when someone says, well, I don't know if I believe that, or that doesn't make sense to me. And we say things like, well, trust the science. Well, all the experts agree. Well, the evidence says this. And I want to tell you, there's nothing more anti-science than getting angry at people who ask questions about the evidence and then just bashing them upside the head or yelling at them or mocking them or threatening to cancel them because they don't get what you're saying. If what you're saying is true, if it's good, if it's useful, if it's valuable, it can stand up to scrutiny. And in fact, when people scrutinize, that should be something you celebrate because it is the best opportunity you can possibly have to demonstrate the strength and the beauty and the integrity of the truth. If you are an educator, you want students to challenge you when they don't believe what you say, when they don't trust what you say, when they don't understand what you say, because this gives you the chance to not only tell them what's true, but to show them the reasons and the arguments and the logic for why it's true. And by doing so, you transfer, you impart the ability to think for themselves. And you raise a generation of students who know something is true, not because Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so appeal to their own authority and said it, but because you taught them how to reason well, how to think critically and creatively for themselves, and then they can go forth and be good representatives of the truth and embrace the truth because they know why it matters. They know more than just, this is what someone told me to do. And you know, when you fail to do this, what happens is you create a generation of people who have doubts and have questions and they become afraid to voice it because they say, well, they're just gonna yell at me. They're just gonna call me stupid. They're just gonna get angry at me. So you know what I'll do? I'll keep my doubts to myself and I won't say anything at all. That's not healthy. It's not healthy for the other person. It's not healthy for your relationship with them. And that's not healthy in relation to your goal of being an effective educator. Encourage questions, encourage the expression of doubt, 
not because what you're saying is untrue, but because if what you're saying is true, then it's not afraid of the opportunity to demonstrate its own integrity in the face of questions, doubts, and objections. Those are TK's two cents for today on teaching and being taught. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're listening on YouTube, please hit the like button. Please hit subscribe and be sure to add any comments that you have in the comments section and be sure to share this video with a family member or friend that you think might benefit from it. If you're listening on audio podcasts, be sure to subscribe, be sure to leave comments and be sure to give this a good rating if you think this has benefited from benefited you. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in. Keep creating freedom in your life and keep modeling it for others. Peace.